Uh, well, I'm going to begin by asking, I mean, of course, your, your uh, weekend was about kind of spontaneous love, and, and, and this is about an enduring, sustained kind of marriage. I was wondering, they're, they're both at completely different ends of the spectrum, but did that change the dynamic or, or the way you approached the project at all? Uh, I don't think so. I think in many ways they are part of the same kind of story. They're just like trying to explore different parts of relationships and the kind of the, the difficulties and complexities of relationships and how you know, as individuals we exist within them and how we try and define ourselves and understand ourselves through the relationships we have. Um, and so it was actually quite nice to have, to have done Weekend and like look at the beginnings of something and look at people looking forward and then go to the end of it and look at like people looking back at their lives and seeing what their lives has become and that relationship. I mean, it, it's hauntingly naturalistic and I was just wondering if, if you're consciously kind of observant do, when you're kind of writing the screenplay are you kind of watching people or speaking to you know parents or family members and trying to study these kind of marriages and long-term relationships or is it all just stuff that you've that's kind of ingrained in you that you know about already I think it's like it feels like it's ingrained in me I feel like it's like it's 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 like the themes that I'm interested in are the themes that I find just like personally interesting to me and kind of my understanding of myself and my relationships and you know whether they're platonic or romantic or whatever they are definitely feed it always into the stories but I am you know if I go I do a lot of writing like in like cafes and outside and all that kind of thing and I do find especially in the early stages of writing just sitting and just watching people and watching people interact and watching kind of relationships unfold in front of you even if you can't hear them are just really interesting um, I think there's, you know, there's an idea of what a perfect relationship is and of course that doesn't exist and so seeing people in relationships is always interesting. I mean, am I right thinking this began life as a short story and, and if so how did that kind of process work for you to kind of take that short story and make it a feature length? Yeah it is based on a short story and a really beautiful short story as well and it is quite a small story but that like uh, the heart of the story is the same you know this man finds out this information and it kind of changes everything and it's just you take I mean, I think adapting short stories is actually a really fascinating, interesting process because you really can have a chance to expand rather than if you're adapting a novel, you have to like chip away and cut away the stuff that can be great. So it was just about widening the story, like adding things that needed to be added, shifting the like protagonist's uh, viewpoint a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was a really kind of good process. Um, I'm not going to ask you what happens the week after the film ends because obviously that's, I don't, I don't even want to know what happens, but when you're, when you're writing, because it's, do you imagine that or does this stop where the film ends and the script ends or do you sometimes think what happens next for these two? Yeah I kind of I'm done when the film is done really I like to build up to that point and it was very much the same with Weekend people would say what happens so they get back together again and I'm like I don't know because they're not real and it's over but to me I like you know you build up you build up you're trying to like kind of modulate that thing to the end point and then I don't want to personally know I don't want to know what happens to Kate and Jeff I don't want to know if they stay together, they fall apart, it's all going to be perfect or not. I don't like to know those things. Um, and I suppose it's why I'm not really interested necessarily in those films that do tie everything up neatly and, you know, with a bow. I like to just keep things a little bit open-ended. <clears throat> the two actors, I mean, they're both, I don't need me to tell you, that they're obviously outstanding. And when you were casting, did you hire them kind of separately, safe in the knowledge that they work together, or did you need to see them together in the same room, you know, having a conversation before you could f finally kind of make your decision? Yeah, no, I, we cast them separately. I cast, we, we always decided that we had to cast Kate first. Um, so it was important to know who was going to be Kate in order to find someone that we felt was right. And Charlotte, you know, agreed to do the film. And then, and then Tom, who, was, wh who we wanted anyway, became the kind of perfect combination. But we, we, they were both cast. And then I got in a room with them afterwards to see them, like we just read through the script, for example. And that's quite a scary moment. You're sitting there and you're going, OK, is this, is this going to work, these two people? But the truth is, you know, you know, they are very, very, you know, accomplished actors. They know, they know how to create that chemistry, I think. Um, and, so, and so it kind of worked well. And I also think because they are actors of a certain calibre and with a kind of film work behind them, that kind of history of that film work plays into the film, which is quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, Charlotte Rampling in particular just sort of blew me away in, in several scenes. And I was just wondering if there was ever a time when you were, you know, behind the monitor watching them, that you just had to kind of take a moment, sort of step back and go, Blimey, that was really good what she just did. Does that, does that ever happen? Is that all kind of in the editing process that you can ha able to, to see it from that perspective? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you absolutely can. I mean, it, it's slightly weird because we shot on 35mm film, so the monitors are terrible. So you can't really see anything in the monitors anyway. Um, so sometimes you might think something is incredible, and it turns out that it's 
not incredible. And then sometimes you might see something, oh, that feels good. And then you get in the edit room and you sit on a proper screen, you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And the thing about Charlotte especially is she does so much that's so subtle and interesting in her face that you only really notice it when you're like back there and you're watching the edit and you're like, oh, that's really, really fascinating. So it was, it's always really nice when you get into that edit and you, and you, you, you know, sometimes on set it's also crazy that you don't really appreciate what it is that you've had, that you've, that you've got. And, uh, I mean, we don't have nearly enough roles written for actors of this calibre and this experience, because, I mean, there is obviously an inclination for, for films to star younger performers mm -hmm. in lead roles. But does that sort of surprise you? Because I think the, the kind of... The, the fact they've got so much experience, life experiences actually adds a kind of... It mm. enriches their characters and adds a kind of wealth of knowledge to everything. So, are you surprised that there aren't more roles written? Yeah, I don't understand it. I mean, I suppose it's, unfortunately, it's very part of, like, Western culture to ignore the fact that there's old people around or older people around. And I think we do have some absolute terrifying fear of getting older and of dying, essentially, which I understand. But it's like we don't want to see that reflected on the screen and we assume that if we're going to tell stories about people that are in, the, in their 60s and 70s and 80s, that it's going to have to involve death. And we just don't want to see that or write about it. But to me, like, you know the people of this of, of this age have just have, have seen the world far more than someone that's 20 like and I, I want to see that and you know I want to see their faces on the screen and I want to see who they are on the screen and have you found that at times that it's been more of a struggle to, to break into the industry and to get funding and, and to be shown in cinemas etc because of the fact that I mean obviously you've had protagonists who are gay and you've had mm. protagonists who were over 60 you know mm. have you found that that's actually been a, a hindrance in some regard I think it certainly was when I did Weekend, like it, that was a very hard film to raise money for because nobody particularly thought anyone's going to want to see a film about, about two gay people. This was a lot easier, I think, in retrospect because, you know, we had it cast so it was, it was people that were, that were known and I, I, this was actually quite a simple process and I do think that there's, there's a growing interest in, in films that are about an older, an older audience because there are a lot of people who are older that want to go to the cinema and have more time on the hands and can maybe afford to go to the cinema. So it's like, you know, hopefully more of those kind of stories will be told. And one of the kind of themes, one of the key themes in this, of course, is, is the, the idea of them reminiscing about their past. I mean, obviously this brings up a host of, of emotions mm -hmm. from, from their past. And, and I was wondering if, if you're someone who looks back a lot, are you, are you quite a nostalgic person? Uh, yeah, I am. I think I, it, my past is very interesting to me and everyone's past is I like to know where people are from and what they've done and like it's because it affects everything like it affects so much like where you're born who happened to be your parents what town you were born in all of those things and every single event that happens to you absolutely defines who you are and can define whether you end up being this or that or successful or not successful whatever it is and I think it's just so interesting and also like I think there's a definitely a, like melancholy aspect to being British that makes us like reflect and like think about those things from our past and so I've always been that kind of person. And that's one thing as well, I mean, I kind of, I guess, sort of naturally, I ended up seeing, taking Jeff's perspective of this more so. And I think that um, when I was interviewing Tom before, he said it was the same for him and he had to ask his wife to kind of interpret some of Kate's lines and some of her sort of looks. Mm. And I was wondering, I was quite similar. I almost said to my girlfriend, why does she do this? Or why? Yeah. I mean, did you have, did you speak to many women about that sort of, because I do feel like there is a very much a kind of, the way the man would perceive it as opposed to, yeah, it's weird. Not really. I felt like, I mean, I don't know what it says about me, but I felt, I felt very torn between two of them. I felt like I could completely understand Kate's emotional dealings with it. And I could imagine uh, Jeff's as well. It all made total sense to me that, you know, they're both like disappearing into their own worlds and worrying about things. And, you know, you hear people like, oh, I don't know why Kate doesn't just like forget about it. But to me, I understand that she, she does try to forget about it, but she's just thrown off balance. Like, and this notion that your life could have been different if your husband had married someone else, what would have happened to your life? Where would you be? What would you be doing? That's a pretty major thing to throw you off balance. So it always made sense to me. Because even though, I, as I said, I, mean, I did sort of take his perspective, I still felt that no one was, no one was to blame and I never saw either of them as the, the villain. I mean, was that quite tough to have? Because when you've got a film with, with two people that are kind mm. of, for a lot of the movie, are at odds with one another, mm. is it quite tough to ensure that it's completely kind of impartial and then we're able to view it and see it from both sides. Yeah, I mean, I think to me it's always so important. Like, I just want, like, I don't want 
any character that I do a story about, I want to have sympathy for that character. I, I, have, I do have sympathy for people. Like People make wrong decisions, but it doesn't mean they're bad people. So for me, it was kind of like an easy process. Like It just made sense to me, both of these people. And I never wanted to make either of them the villain, because neither of them are the villain. They're both, as individuals, struggling to understand you know, their relationship and struggling to understand themselves. And so that was kind of all, all I needed to kind of think about. Just finally, very quickly, mm. have you got another, any other projects in the works film-wise? Have you got any ideas? Uh, there's a film that we're making uh, next year in America. We're shooting next summer. And it's a, not a relationship movie this time. And it's definitely kind of wider in scope. Uh, but I don't know, to me, it still makes sense as the next film after this, even though it's a very different kind of story. Thank you. Cheers, Stefan. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey You Guys!